a segment that, you know what, I'm really going to enjoy talking about. We talk about a lot of the guys who are at the very top of things. A lot of the trivia questions that we have later in the show are going to be about some of the best players in the NFL. It's going to be recognizing a lot of those performances. But what about some surprise stars? Guys who, when we were talking about this in August, in September, when the season was just beginning, we weren't really factoring these players in, but they have made a big difference one way or another for their football team. We're each going to recognize three. We want to hear from you guys as well because you follow your teams very closely. So who has been a surprise star for your team that's making all the difference? Fire their names off in the chat. We'll give them some recognition. But Mike, who's your first surprise star? My first has to be Jalen Hurts. I don't think anyone as high in expectations as you could have had for him. I don't think you saw realistic MVP caliber performance in year three from Jalen Hurts coming after last year. I mean, the things that he has done, the improvements he's made as a passer have been night and day. It's just been transformative, truly. And the way he's protecting the football now has been massive for that team and how they're built. He has the lowest turnover the play rate of any quarterback in the NFL this season. And you can say the situation, whatever, but he's not the first quarterback to have good situation. He is, oh, by the way, the number one team, leading the number one team in the NFL right now. That he is. Like, you know, like, Fact he's not the, like, there are a lot of guys who have good situations around the NFL that aren't playing to the level that Jalen Hurts is. And this guy was, you know, a 53rd overall pick. Eagles fans were mad when they drafted him. Thought it was a waste of a pick. Did not see this high end coming from him. I, I always thought he could be an NFL starter because of that dynamic rushing ability. But I will hand up, say I did not think he would ever become this as a passer. And Jalen Hurts uh, truly does deserve to be in the MVP conversation with what he's done this season. No, it's been awesome. It's been fantastic to see um, how they have changed their offense to fit his strengths so well. And he has been able to shine in Mm -hmm. all of those instances. You, you, You highlighted earlier this week the design run game, how they're getting him involved with that, making him a weapon with his legs. And then, too, I don't want to just say that he's only that, and that's the only reason why he's playing better. The arm, dude. Some of these big time passes to Devontae and AJ Brown and even your boy Quez Watkins, right? So many of these players that he's able to connect with has great chemistry with. Um, it, it feels like him taking that leap is certainly uh, somebody who's worth recognizing here in this segment. The first guy that I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with Cleveland Brown center Ethan Posick. I'll go a little bit deeper into the bag here because. Posting wasn't having a great career, honestly, before this mm-hmm. year. And he's been playing well since he's been out in Cleveland. I feel like the Browns have noticed, like, holy cow, this guy was integral to what we were able to do on the offensive side of things. Up front, you look at his PFF grades here compared to just last year. How much better he is overall, how much more reliable he is overall, but especially in that pass blocking great i mean he was late to reach guys last year he was getting overpowered all the time guys were just getting by and they were shooting the gaps on and they were crossing his face all this kinds of stuff and i went back and i watched a couple of his games this morning as we were going through this segment and he's just so much more reliable he's keeping the shoulders in front of guys he's angling guys well he's walling walling these players off and look you know when you play on an offensive line like the cleveland browns had you know you're playing next to wyatt taylor you're playing next to joel batonio makes it easier of course but He is without a doubt individually stepped up, and I think that you see that with his absence since injury. You see the pressures allowed. hasn't even allowed double-digit pressures so far this season from that center position. So wanted to shout out Ethan Posick, who uh, could hit free agency and really cash out in a big way from what has been a career year for him. I'm happy because I was high on him coming out of LSU. I I thought he was going to be this guy earlier in his career, but, you know, I'm not wrong. I'll just say, there you go. I'm not wrong. That's how I feel. Uh, who's the uh, who's the next guy you got? Here? My next guy is none other than New England Patriots edge rusher Josh Uche. Mm. He has been on fire of late. Six sacks over his last three games, averaging four pressures per game over his last seven games, and he's only in a sub package role. You, you know, he, he is a sub package rusher, even though he has a seventy nine point seven grade against the run. Has really improved just all around this year. A breakout performance. Um, second in the NFL right now in pass rush win rate. Ooh. He is just one of the best speed rushers in the league right now. Yeah, he may never be a true every down edge at the NFL level at 245 pounds, but man, everyone's looking for his kind of juice that he brings to the table off the edge and integral to this Patriots defensive dominance this season. No, he's been it's been awesome to see him really take that leap this year. I agree with you. And there are a handful of people in the chat who have already shouted out Josh Uche, so I'm glad that you kind of highlighted some numbers there for him. 
a lot of people are saying Geno Smith. I don't think. Do you have Geno on your last? Did one? not have. Geno, I didn't have Geno. We've talked so, we talked much, so much about yeah, Geno that that I was kind of trying to focus on some other players, but there's no doubt about it. This he, is a prize star. I was gonna say Geno got the player who everyone thought was bad. That's actually a good award. So yeah, we, we already we've did. already recognized him, but certainly yeah. everybody um, in the chat who's saying Geno Smith. Um, you were definitely right there. Jonas saying Tyson Campbell, giving a recognition to the Jags yes, corner there. Great. Definitely playing, having a good year. Nate, Jared Goff. I don't have Jared Goff on my list, but he certainly could be. He seems like he's playing some really great ball this year. Um, Justin Fields, certainly over the second half of the season, has been playing a lot better. Josh Jacobs, Zach says. I mean, Josh a lot Jacobs. of Brandon Ayuk, too. I've seen that, was, that a lot in chat. Yeah, that's the next name that I was going to go to, Brandon Ayuk. And, man, he has become a wonderful route runner this year see i don't know if it's a surprise because people have been hyping him up since like midway through his rookie year that this was coming and you kind of thought yeah, it but was, it was yeah. coming but yeah i don't know man he, he's showing it this year uh-huh. i think is i guess what's uh what's worth recognizing patrick shout now chris lindstrom the interior offensive lineman for the atlanta falcons who is one of the highest graded guards that we have in the national football league yes. um so that's definitely a shout out there cole saying tony pollard i can see tony pollard because he's having more production than in the past but like Tony Pollard's been good, you know? Mm-hmm. Tony Pollard has been good, so it's not too much of a surprise that, oh, yeah. more touches, more carries, even more production. So um, I'll, I'll keep reading off stuff in the chat as we go along here. But wanted to recognize Isaiah Rogers as well, the Indianapolis Colts outside corner. He's playing opposite Stephon Gilmore, former sixth-round pick from a couple of years ago from uh, from UMass, I believe, and, and he's just another guy taking his game to a completely different level this year. With Stephon Gilmore on the other side, you'd think, all right, well, we're probably going to pick on the other guy. Anytime that they've tried to pick on Isaiah Rodgers on the other side of things, he's made him pay. Overall grade, taking a leap by 15 points this season compared to last. Um, coverage grade's a little bit down with a run defense grade as well. I think that that is a huge area where he's shown a lot more strength and reliability, being able to come up and, um, and be a great run defense player. Yards allowed, clearly much less than it was last year so he's just playing some really good ball i'd say that that coverage grade should honestly be even higher for him for as reliable as he has been this season so huge leap of a year for isaiah rogers um wanted a hat tip how well he's playing opposite stefan gilmore in that defense yeah he's been that was definitely one i did not see coming i will say that another one this one my last guy that i truly can't believe the leap he's taken this season because He's been starting for multiple years now for the Cincinnati Bengals and really was as far away from an impact player as you can get a linebacker. Just kind of like you'd watch a whole Bengals game and not know this guy was on the football field. It's Jermaine Pratt. He mm-hmm. has made impact play after impact play, especially of late. You go back to the Kansas City game where he had the game-changing force fumble. Now has the highest coverage grade of any linebacker in the NFL this season in year four. And again, last year, 54.0 overall grade. This year, 83.4. I mean, just a completely different player in the speed that he's playing with, the amount of times you just recognize him on the football field. Uh, I'm sure Quinn can speak to it, but they have one of the better linebacker duos, if not the best linebacker duo in the NFL right now with the way those Bengals linebackers are playing. Wasn't that supposed to be his thing? Because I remember in the draft guide, wasn't he like a former safety? He's a former safety at NC State. To, yeah, so like coverage was supposed to be his thing, and he was never great at it, but yeah, you're right this year. I mean, he's been he's been cash money. He's going to get paid. And it shows how much of like playing linebacker in the NFL is play speed, like processing speed. Like it takes a while to get to know, like get to see things quickly and not be in your head uh, play after play because if you're still thinking about the scheme, having to diagnose on the fly and think about things – you're just going to look hesitant and not going to be a good NFL linebacker. Uh, looking at some other answers in the chat, uh, a lot of people are shouting out Dexter Lawrence as well. I, Dexter Lawrence having a phenomenal season, but Dexter Lawrence was the 17th yes. overall pick. So it, it's not like yeah. him playing really well was a total surprise, but I certainly see everybody who is who's shouting him out. Jeff said Talanova Ufonga is a good one. I think that that's definitely yeah, warranted. Ufonga has been fantastic. A couple people have said this. Uh, Gerard is, is the comment that I'm looking at right now. Frankie Louvu, the linebacker for the Carolina Panthers, also having a phenomenal year. Zach saying Damian Pierce. I think Damian Pierce is worth a shout-out as well. Jordan said, want to give a shout-out to Alex Highsmith, the edge rusher for the Steelers. Highsmith's been playing well. TJ says Matt Milano. Matt Milano is not my last guy that I'm going to bring up, but like Milano's been mm-hmm. awesome. awesome this year. Yeah, I completely agree with you there. Um, last guy that I got before we'll get to more chat stuff, but David Long Jr., the linebacker for the Tennessee Titans. He mm-hmm. has had a fan fantastic year man and this is somebody who 
as a former six-round pick for out of West Virginia, not a lot of people thought that he'd really be able to take this leap. And really what he's been able to show this year has been in run defense. He is such an aggressive dude when it comes to attacking the line of scrimmage. You see that run defense grade there. That is up 23 points from what it was last year. It just goes to show how much of an impact that he's been making. Overall grades obviously taking a leap as well. Coverage, still work in progress, but man, what they are asking this guy to do, play in the middle of the defense, be an inside linebacker, read and react to where the ball is going and attack the line of scrimmage. That's been his bread and butter this year, and that's what he's made. I mean, he's made such a big impact. His injury sucks for the Titans because... They were playing really well on that side of the ball, especially in the middle of that defense with him. And so wanted to give him his recognition there, um, even though he's banged up right now for a fantastic year that he has been having. So David Long Jr. had to shout him out. He was a guy that coming out of West Virginia, his tape was insane. He was would absolutely go into contact without fear, played like a missile with no real uh, direction here or there because he missed a ton of tackles on tape. And then he goes, looked like a high-end athlete on tape, and then goes to the combine or goes to his pro day, runs a 481. That's why he falls to sixth round because he's 5'11, 225, running a 481. How do you run a but on tape, he looks, I mean, he looks like he runs a 4'5. Like I, that one never made sense. Uh, glad to see that he's actually playing at a high level now that the game's like in year four, kind of similar thing to Jermaine Pratt, the game's slowing down for him. I do think there's something to guys at the combine when they run, they just hate the track stance mm -hmm. you know how you like you gotta you gotta like get into the track stance and get out of it i really do some people can't because i mean like there's no reason why david long should have ran up for it yeah there's no way yeah it's not even close to how he plays so i just wonder i just wonder if that uh goes into it as well um some people shouting out um where was the one that i wanted to get to there were a lot of lines once you guys were shouting out kirby joseph you were shouting out malcolm rodriguez um isaiah rogers no that was uh that was from earlier. Where's the Where's the one about James Houston? That was it. James Houston, the pass rusher. People wanted to shout him out because he's got a sack in every single game. So wanted to make sure that shout Dustin had a great comment. James Houston, fourth in his household, number one in your hearts because James Houston the fourth is his name. So I thought that, that was good. That's the, the comment that I wanted to get to. Nick said Andrew Thomas for the Giants. Again, Andrew Thomas having a great year, but former first round pick, former OT one. Like we're kind of expecting this. We, mm -hmm. we we did kind of want this to happen, but. Um, Ooh, Nathan said Josie Jewell. I agree, especially in coverage. He's been playing a lot better this year. Ramondre Stevenson, Nate says. Not an expert, says Jeff Akuda. We had a lot of Lions on here that a lot of people wanted to give out some shout-outs to. So, all right, there we go. Those are our surprise superstars for the 2022 season, or at least some guys that we wanted to give a shout-out to.